And she's buying a stairway to heaven Hello there, welcome to my channel and my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today we're going to look at a pen I didn't know anything about until I stopped by my favorite brick and mortar pen shop, Reed Stationers. If you saw the Plumix review, you would have seen a sneak preview of this pen, the Platinum Balance. I saw this pen in the Platinum display alongside a Platinum pen that I've lusted after for months, the Platinum 3776. This shiny blue and gold pen is very attractive and they had it displayed posted so the gorgeous gold-colored nib was prominent. The price was a bit more than I'd usually pay for what I'd call an inexpensive pen. It was $65 Canadian. But since my mailbox is not pleasing me these days, I figured what the hell. It'll make an interesting comparison with my other platinum pens, the Preppy, the Profonte, and the Plaisir. These four pens make an interesting price line leading all the way up to the Platinum 3776. Let's see how the B stands up to the three P's right now. I already gave you a sneak peek of the unboxing of this pen while I was taking a look at the Pilot Plumix in my previous review. Here's that video now. Of course, as always, I saw something else that intrigued me and my pen fanaticism and also lightened my wallet. I saw this. This is a platinum, a platinum balance. I had not heard of the platinum balance, so I bought it with a view to comparing it to the marvelous incremental line of affordable fountain pens from platinum. And a nice feel, it's a metal, like a light aluminum, very much like the, the Plaisir. And now I've been writing with the platinum balance a little over two weeks now. So let's look at this pen. Take it out of the box again. It's this nice silver platinum box you just saw. And our instructions, a cartridge, and here is the pen. And let's take a good look at this pen. What I'd like to do today is look at the parts and features of this fountain pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and do a writing sample. And stay tuned after the writing sample where I'll discuss the things that I like and things that I don't like so much about this pen. Overall, this is a very attractive pen. I am partial to blue with gold accents, as you can see from one of my favorite pen BBS pens, this 308 in infinite blue with gold hardware. Very attractive pen. The balance is very light and smooth and cigar-shaped pen. When I first bought it, and even after I unboxed it, I thought it was extruded aluminum. And seriously, I made a mistake! But it is actually injection molded plastic uh, that you can see by looking at the edge of the barrel there. You can see the injection molding gate right there. We see a rounded top and a cap that tapers up until we get to a rounded gold colored cap ring. The name Platinum is stamped and gold paint filled on the front in very handsome block letters just above the cap band. The word Japan, I don't know if you can see, there we go. The word Japan is in raised plastic just to the side. 
When we look at the clip closely, we can see that it is a raised plastic platform right there that extends out of the cap and to which the uh, end of the clip is clamped. The gold colored clip is very nicely shaped, very springy, and very usable. There is about a millimeter step down to the barrel, which is straight for a bit and then tapers down to a rounded point. The cap snaps off to reveal a long tapered section made of the same colored plastic as the cap and the barrel. The clutch ring is a gold colored as well and there is a definite edge on the step here. Um, it isn't the ring itself which is actually smooth and beveled but it's the edge of the plastic barrel which hasn't been beveled or rounded at all. The section is fairly narrow and tapers down to another gold colored ring which has a nicely shaped flare on it. And then there is this gold colored platinum nib. It's hard to say what size this nib is. It isn't exactly like the nibs on the Triple P line of platinums. The Preppy Profonte Plaisir isn't exactly like those. It is more of a a lamy style nib. The other nibs have their size marked on them. In this case, the 05 for medium. This just has the kanji character for middle. Why do you have the Chinese character for soup tattooed on your right buttock? It's not soup, it's courage. No, it isn't. But I suppose it does take courage to demonstrate that kind of commitment to soup. <laughs> on it, under the platinum logo P. I suppose that just means medium. It does write a medium line, so I'm going to stick with that interpretation. And there is the plastic non-finned feed. The feed is a dark smoke translucent plastic, which I find intriguing. And inside the cap, there's a liner which is good, but it's not the slip and seal. You can see there's no spring in there. And it's interesting that the, the cheaper pens in the line have the slip and seal, but uh, this more expensive one doesn't. The cap posts very deeply and very securely, and even though the pen is plenty long enough to write with unposted, posting it makes the pen have an even nicer balance Hence the name, I think. Or could they just be stealing from Schaefer? Funny, it doesn't look like a Schaefer balance. Of course, this isn't a Schaefer balance either. But I don't think the platinum balance looks like a Schaefer balance. Well, it's cigar shaped. I suppose they stole that. But posted, this is a very attractive and comfortable pen in the hand. The feeling is very reminiscent of the Parker Sonnet. The deep posting, the attractive slim lines... The cool nib and the comfortable feeling is very sonnet-like. I think they're very similar. The barrel unscrews, and the pen came with only one platinum proprietary cartridge, but this has a platinum converter in it that was kindly donated by my pen friend and viewer Janice. She has a few of them and gifted this one to me. She was shocked when I told her of the current price of these, which is about 10 bucks U.S., as she picked up a few of them a few years ago for about uh, $4.95 Canadian each. I have to say that the extra weight of the platinum converter has given a little extra heft to this pen, and it feels nicer than with just a cartridge. So there are the parts and features. Now let's look at some size comparisons. First, we'll look at the, the three P's, the Preppy, the Prefonte, and the plaisir up next to our balance. And let's look at the four of them posted. You can see that the, the balance really doesn't fit the, the style of the first three P's, and it is definite upgrade. Now the plaisir is a very nice silky texture. That's a metal pen. And the balance 
is not quite as slippery as this pen. This pen keeps slipping out of my hands all the time. In fact, just now when I tried to pick it up, it slipped out of my hands. I slipped in the shower and I think I dislocated my shoulder. Is that my arm? Who doesn't feel like an arm? Then maybe you should let it go. <laughs> But because this one's uh, a higher grade plastic resin, it's uh, more grippable. And from left to right, the prices in US dollars are $5 for the Preppy, $10 for the Prefonte, $15 for the Plaisir, and about $40 for the Balance. The next platinum fountain pen in the line of increasing prices is the platinum Procyon at around 50 bucks. As I understand it, the Platinum Balance used to be named the Platinum Cool. Or perhaps that is the name of the demonstrator version of the Balance. I'm not sure, and there is conflicting information about this on internet forums and online vendors. I think it's just cool that they stole the name from Schaefer and nobody gives a flying... Oh. Fudge. Get a rolling donut about it suits me. But let's look at some actual lineup size comparisons. Okay, here is the Platinum Balance with a Platinum Prefonte and a Platinum Plaisir, a Parker Sonnet, and a Pilot Metropolitan. Now let's look at them posted. And here are the five pens posted. The balance on the top, a Prefonte, the Plaisir, a Parker Sonnet, and a Metropolitan. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Platinum Balance. And it has a medium steel nib and the ink today is Robert Oster Bondi Blue and let's take a look at the swatch for Bondi Blue. It's a really nice azure kind of blue with a lot of red sheening. I don't know whether you can see that or not, but a lot of really nice red sheen in it. I like that ink a lot. I'm gonna have to get more than a sample of this. And this is Dimene Asa Blue. I thought it was Asa Gal. I get really mixed up between the names of Orochizuku and diamine here, but diamine asa blue, which is a nice uh, azure kind of blue as well, and one of my favorite inks, a Roshizuku cotton pecky. And let's check the wetness on this pen. As you can see, it is very wet indeed. And I did nothing, absolutely nothing, to this nib out of the box. And I've been writing with it for Oh gee, about a week or so now. And it is very, very nice. And as to line variation, I'm not expecting much. That's no pressure at all. There's a little bit of pressure. And the nib flexes off of the feed, but uh, doesn't separate very much at all. So, and there's a good amount of feedback. like a graphite pencil.
kind of feel. But very smooth. And our writing sample. And some reverse writing. That's actually not too bad. It's a lot more feedback than regular writing, but you're getting a thinner line and it's actually fairly wet. Interesting. And some quick writing. As you can see, it's keeping up very nicely. So, what do I like and what do I not like so much about this fountain pen? Well, I was initially attracted to the deep blue and gold accents and unique gold-colored nib on this pen. It has some real elegance, I think. I like the feel of this pen. It feels sleek and smooth and not as slippery as the Plaisir. The difference between the Plaisir and the Balance, other than the 30 bucks, feels like the difference between my Pen BBS 308 and my Pen BBS 480. The 480 here feels sleeker and posts a bit better and deeper and feels more balanced in the hand than the 308 which feels a little chunkier and a little, it doesn't post quite as well. The Balance is certainly a better looking pen, in my opinion, than the Plaisir. I like the smooth, wet, thick line this pen lays down, and that's right out of the box with no tuning. Certainly better than the performance of some $250 pens. Oh, Even though it's an extra $10 upgrade, I really like this platinum converter too. It uh, looks great, matches the pen nicely, takes a lot of ink, and adds some extra heft to an otherwise fairly light pen. Now, what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, I still think it's about $20 Canadian overpriced. I paid $65 Canadian for it, and I think now that I've had it and examined it, it would be better priced around $45 to $50. Of course, I bought it at a brick and mortar shop, and there might be better prices even with shipping and currency conversions than what I paid. But the pen had some wow factor that overcame my pocketbook. Physically, there are two things that I don't like so much about the balance. The first is the sharp edge on that barrel. There is no reason why that edge shouldn't be beveled or even made to sit flush with that clutch ring. No reason at all. It's only about half a millimeter for corn's sake. Son, you wait here while Daddy tries to talk some sense into this raven derelict. The second thing is the narrow, tapered section. I like the length of it, but it's a little thin for my hand. This is completely subjective, of course, and those with smaller hands, or those who like thin sections, won't have an issue with it at all. And there you have it. The Platinum Balance. I guess a Procyon is next before the big leap to the gold nib of the 3776. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching.
And that's all she wrote. I made this. 